3D printing is one of the fastest growing methods of manufacturing, being able to print almost anything imaginable, ranging from instruments, lampshades, to machine parts. 3D printing has proved over time that it is truly a valuable resource. However, while the capabilities of this field is rapidly expanding, the public's knowledge is not increasing near the same rate. Um, 3D printing, I know that you can print like parts for something without having to like manufacture a whole new good. So you can do like small things or and you can like design 3D stuff on the computer to be printed. That's what I know about it. So 3D printing is a way just to um, produce a solid um, good. Normally it uses some kind of plastic um, and it does so by laying it down in, in layers to build some solid physical product. So I know that 3D printing is um, done I think with a polymer like ink inside of it that it keeps its structure up as dry and you have to do it layer by layer so you can't really there's certain objects you can't print unless you print it piecewise. Oh, I'm thinking 3D printing probably started at like NASA or Lockheed Martin or... Something. 3D printing was started in a lab in Palo Alto in 1996. I'm just kidding, I don't know. <laughs> um, I think it was started by Xerox or Microsoft or one of the tech companies. Or... I'm guessing 3D printing's probably been around for maybe five years. I heard about it before my mission a few years ago. Um, and it wasn't really a common good, and now like most universities and labs like, have their own. So. I mean, most technologies have been around for a lot longer than they've been widespread. So my guess would be it was started in the 90s. Given the nature of the question, probably been around since the 80s, just none of us know about it. We've seen that the public has a general knowledge of what 3D printing is but what they're less sure about is its history. The origins of 3D printing can be traced back to Japan almost 40 years ago. The first person credited with this concept is the man Dr. Hideo Kodama. While working for the Nagoya Municipal Industrial Research Institute, he developed and released his research on a rapid prototyping system. This initial machine would simply stack layer upon layer of photopolymers and acrylic-based material create a solid object. Unfortunately for Dr. Kodama, he was unable to file for the patent within the time limit, which is rather ironic since he was a patent lawyer. But guess what? You didn't turn in your paperwork last night. He did I, I no pa paperwork? This office is now closed. Yeah! So we fast forward a few years to the mid-1980s when this man, Charles Hull, invented the process of stereolithography. It too used photopolymers, but in liquid form, and exposed them to UV lasers which caused them to harden. He received the first patent for his machine, the Stereolithographic Apparatus, or SLA, machine. A similar process was developed by Carl Deckard in 1987, who used a powder instead of liquid photopolymers. Over the next several years, the technology underwent further changes to make it a faster, more efficient process. One notable development was the creation of fused deposition modeling in 1989 by Scott Crump, which takes a melted down material, pushes it out through a nozzle, and places layers of filaments upon one another. This process is still commonly used today. Throughout the 90s, many 3D printing companies were created, although only a few of these original companies remain today. The process of 3D printing began to be focused on how it could be used in specific fields, such as industry and even into the medical field. The ability to create complex, precise parts was incredibly beneficial to manufacturing. This focus on how to utilize this developing technology led to the first ever 3D printed organ, a bladder. A scaffold was printed and the cells were injected into it, providing a place for the tissue to grow before it could be implanted into a human being. Further developments were made, including prosthetics and even a functioning miniature kidney. One new area involves 3D printing food. 
NASA is a major advocate for this, even going as far as to create a 3D food printer that works in the zero gravity of space. In not even 40 years, 3D printing has gone from its infancy to a full-fledged industry. The possibilities for design and creation are almost as limitless as the human imagination. As time goes on, we may see it expand to further areas, including construction, the music industry, and others. We continue to push it to the limits, and by doing so, we are paving the way to the future.